Hey, what's up? This is Todd Smith, and I'm back with another quick video. This video is going to show you how I multi-track my hardware into my iPad using Aria Pro. I've had this question thrown at me many times after many videos. People are like, how do you get your iPad to record multi-track for your audio? And this will show everything you need in order to get your hardware recorded into your iPad at a decent quality. Now, the first thing you need is hardware. I mean, if you don't have hardware, how are you gonna record your hardware into your iPad? I don't know, figure that out. So after you have hardware, you need an iPad. Those are the two most important things. And after you have those two important things, you can start to connect them. Besides the hardware and the iPad, the first thing you're gonna need is an audio interface. How big you wanna go is dependent on you. How many inputs you need is dependent on your gear and setup. I went with a Focusrite 18i8. This starts with eight inputs and can be expanded to 18 if I want in the future. After getting an interface that's compatible with your iPad, you're gonna need some sort of adapter. Now, these smaller adapters are available, which will allow you to USB into your iPad, but it won't give you power because you only have a USB input. The adapter you see hooked into the iPad now allows USB and power to the iPad at the same time, so I'm able to record and keep the stability of power and not drain the iPad. I run the USB from the adapter into the back of the Focusrite and all the audio cables from my instruments into the Focusrite. At that point, you have to choose what program you want to record your hardware into. There's multiple options in the iOS universe. You have Cubasis and a few other options. I have chose Aria Pro. As you see up top here, as they give you a quick picture, you can see the ARM tracks and the input they're assigned to that is fully assignable in ARIA Pro. ARIA Pro can handle mono and stereo inputs. So with a nice software like ARIA Pro, a USB interface, a little adapter that allows USB and power, then you just need a little bit of hardware and you're recording directly into your iPad at very high quality. I recommend ARIA Pro for recording audio because I feel it records the best quality audio on iOS.
up, this is Todd Smith. I'm back with another video. In this video, I want to speak about the iOS software side of my setup. In a previous video, I speak about the connections, the MIDI, the power, you know, the audio, everything connected into the iPad, into my hardware. I will link that video down below to anyone who missed it. But this video, I want to specifically focus on the iOS software side. But jumping into the iOS aspect of this video, I want everyone to know these are what I used and there are variants of each of these programs I show you. And if you choose to use a different variant that can do the same thing, feel free to use whatever you like. These are no means the best things out there. These are just what I use. With all that being said, you can see AudioBus open. And AudioBus is my main connector within the iOS world. AudioBus connects my all my apps to my main central DAW recording app, allow, allowing me to multi-track various iOS apps within the iOS world. So as of right now, you can see I have Core Gadget and Sunriser hooked into Aria Pro. With Aria Pro, I can layer, as you can see, recording right now live, various live tracks. I have my microphone going right now. This could be beyond a microphone. This could be a keyboard, a guitar. You can layer as many live tracks into Aria Pro as your interface can handle. I've been able to do tons of live audio on this iPad Pro with no issues. And as you can see right now, I'm gonna layer my voice, which is an audio input with an iOS synthesizer Sunriser. And if I start Core Gadget, I'm now layering Core Gadget, my voice, and a synthesizer within the iOS world, which is, again, Sunriser. So this is how I layer audio inputs. iOS. So AudioBus brings all my various iOS into Aria Pro, which is then multi-tracked with various inputs. And I can add my hardware here. As you can see, it has a nice little view where you have a full mixer view and you have your multi-track recording mode. And it's all very fluid. As you can see, I'm doing it live. Another great thing about the audio bus app is it gives me this little sidebar here, which I can bring up, which allows me to jump between my various apps without having to, you know, multi tap or m use the home button or anything of that nature. I can just jump around to any app I have within the iOS ecosystem very smoothly. which is always nice to have a kind of nice navigation button. So once I have all my synthesizers into Aria Pro with all the hardware inputs I want, I can start multi-tracking my audio, recording my audio. And I can actually add effects to the individual tracks. Up here, I can add effects, go into here, and add any effect from the iOS ecosystem I want to any individual hardware track. I can also do this to any of the individual AudioBus tracks. So AudioBus and Aria Pro are the two main apps that really allow me to record everything and bring everything together within the iOS ecosystem that I use. Then as everybody knows, I love Core Gadget. Core Gadget is kind of my main workhorse my groove box, my workstation. I do a lot of my music. I'll start it on core gadget. Then I'll add MIDI out um, gadgets to my hardware or play it live and record it multi-track style as you see here. But rather than having a microphone, I'll be recording a hardware synthesizer and maybe add an effect over it. You've seen that in my previous videos. Hope this helps some people.
Thank you very much for taking time to check out the video. As always, stay positive, stay creative, support each other, and peace.